Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We have a wild breaking update coming to you about the what was a death statement on Josh uh, from The Bachelorette, his Instagram account. Well, he's alive. He made a video. He was hacked. He is alive, of course. This is great news for him, for his family, for really good news for all that this story wasn't true, except it's just horrifying to think that people exist out there that would or, 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 uh, put a hoax like this together. His account was hacked, and when your account's hacked, you can't reach out to people. So his lifeline of people that he knows through social media, I mean, just a terrifying experience for his family, his friends, anyone who knew him was affected in a way that you could only imagine by hearing about his passing, and now we know that that's not true. We're going to have updates on this story as the day goes because we're, there's still more information coming out, so check out Bachelor Rush Hour, the afternoon podcast, and also on Instagram at T Neils. We'll have updates over there. But so this is how it goes down. TMZ just released this, I mean, moments ago. I mean, moments ago. Bachelor contestant Josh Sider is actually alive. This article came out 20 minutes ago, despite death sentence. As you know, this morning we reported on this, and TMZ gets it right most of the time. I mean, this is the second time in a, in several weeks that there's been hoaxes like this. You can't exactly blame the news organization when a death statement comes out from somebody's Instagram. Like, channel whatever anger you have towards Instagram for not having better, I don't know, security to, to prevent this from happening in the future. Absolutely devastating. So we had already shared this article. It was super tragic and really sad news. And of course, plenty of people out there do suffer from mental health issues and do have issues of depression and anxiety and all of that. And it's important to continue to have a discussion that you are not alone with those issues and people are out there to help you. Uh, but with that said, let's go to what he had to say on his own Instagram. He has his Instagram account back. So this was his last reel, which was just from like, this is from three years ago, a video that he made. People are already commenting, I'm so sorry, I wish I could have saved you. Well, it's okay, he's alive. And it just has several thousand views, but here's his statement on his Instagram about what went down. Hey guys, as you can see, um, I am alive and well. Um, my account was hacked um, for the last 24 hours. I've been trying desperately to get into it. Um, somebody um, was playing a cruel joke and mocking my mental illness and the struggles I've gone through with depression and suicide attempts. And um, I'm sorry for all the pain they caused when they made that post. Um, I just got back into my account. Um, I am going to do all I can with my team to try to identify who is behind this. But again, I apologize for the confusion and um, I will update you guys as more facts come in. Thank you guys. All right, so, I mean, what? just wild. He looks like he's in good health. I mean, you, you can never know for sure, but just wild there. His last post, let's see, this post... So he hasn't actually had any, unless that was a pinned comment, it's hard to see. This post was from five days ago, surviving depression and anxiety one day at a time. I don't know if Instagram's down right now or if so many people are flooding his page that you can't see the comments. The Instagram app is always so glitchy. But there he was just five days ago and people were like, oh my gosh, how bizarre and sad that you know five days after posting a photo about him surviving all of this that that would be what uh, went down uh we know or maybe we didn't know this because he was a uh, episode one um you know didn't work out with caitlin but he's actually in this article by uh, pride 37 stars that came out in 2023 he initially uh said he was pansexual and then he came out as bisexual and um this was only one week ago, so hopefully all of the sort of um, ways in which he's, I don't know, communicating his authentic self can help him uh, recover from a lot of these issues he said he has had. Uh, but TMZ has retracted their previous article. Let's see what they have to say. Because, I mean, they're really good. Uh, usually TMZ breaks stories. They had Kobe Bryant's death way before anyone else. They had all the insider information. They're, they're, they're generally really good with this type of stuff. A truly bizarre series of events surrounding Bachelorette contestant Josh Sider as a former reality star is actually alive, claiming his Instagram account was hacked after a full statement was posted announcing his death. So yeah, this was the initial statement. It's with extreme heavy heart that we share the tragic news of Josh's unexpected passing. As all, you know, and this goes on and on, just real, you know, it just seemed like a honest post. It was typed out. It had the, 
suicide prevention hotline and all that jazz. It was Monday afternoon when a lengthy statement was posted to Josh's Instagram saying in part, it is with an extremely heavy heart that we share the tragic news of Josh's unexpected passing. Josh says whoever hacked his account was playing a cruel joke and mocking his previous struggles with mental health. And uh, what Josh doesn't make clear is why it took him 20 hours to address the hack as multiple outlets across the globe published the story based on the statement. All right. So first of all, TMZ is a key. As far as we know, Josh is the victim of having his account hacked. And they're wondering why didn't he say anything sooner? But the same thing just happened to little Tay in her death hoax. You might not remember little Tay. She's gigantic. She was a gigantic child influence celebrity and then went away. And recently, several weeks ago, a death statement came out on that person's on her page. And it took a while for them to get their account back to say we weren't hacked. So I don't know if it's up to Josh to prove why he didn't alert people sooner. Chances are he was trying to, but without a verified account he's just a random phone number calling news organizations you know what i mean uh on wednesday august 9th a post on the instagram account of the teenage influencer lil tay announced the death of her and her half brother fans questioned it leaving skeptical comments on the post and this is this is what you hate conspiracies but the, these are two exact examples of why people believe in conspiracies. Because every once in a while, this conspiracy that she was dead turned out to not be true. Then Lil Tay told TMZ on Thursday that she wasn't dead and that her account had been hacked. Fans didn't appear to be that surprised, but the news came as a relief to many. My Instagram account was compromised by a third party and used to spread jarring misinformation and rumors about me. So she had this happen to her. And also it took a while for her to get the word out to her people that she wasn't dead. I'm sure there was a lot of, um, you know, it, it, it sounds simple to say, why didn't he just alert people that he was alive? But you have to think about it. He probably has all family calling his parents in complete tears. I mean, no one's believing this was faked. So every single person that knew his struggle, every friend, family member, fraternity guy, guy playing on sports, everyone who had some connection is now feeling devastated by the loss. And meanwhile, he's probably trying to call as many people just saying it's not true, it's not true. Now, is there some sort of sinister plot where he in his in a mental health issue released this statement to cause uh concern because it was a desperate cry for help maybe but without any proof whatsoever i'm not going to go with tmz here and question why he didn't uh, you know why you know alerts weren't made sooner than they were so if you don't remember him, he was eliminated on the first week of Caitlin Bristow's season of The Bachelorette in 2015, has been open and honest about his struggles with his mental health over the years, including bouts of depression and anxiety. You know, I'm not saying everyone's got the same issues when it comes to depression and anxiety, but those that share them help normalize the fact that so many people do have problems, that they do need help out there. Um, on the previous video that we made regarding this story, which I was alerted to this because the video was gaining traction here. But if you go into the comment section, you see, um, first of all, a lot of people are commenting, he's actually alive. So we're going to get this update up as soon as we can. But obviously people are, were sharing their own issues. People were sharing their own, um, you know, ways that they can cope when they're feeling alone. You know, some, some said that you can just even count down from a hundred doing something so simple as going on a walk. I know it's hard to, to share these different ideas with people when everyone sort of suffers and copes differently, but the idea that you're alone, uh, if you do suffer, just think of five friends that you can reach out to. Even if it's not a friend, a 12 step program or Google 12 step programs near you, anything you can do crisis hotline. There are so many people there to help. I, um, I always make this analogy when I lived in New York traveling the subway, I've never seen someone fall onto the ground in the subway. I've seen people, you know, the subway lines are always jerky and, you know, people are holding onto the strap hangers and every, and everything. I've seen crowded subways. I've seen people start to fall, but what you learn, and it's a metaphor for life, but what you learn is when you start to fall, someone else re reflectively picks you up. They don't know you. They're not worried about if you're verified or not. If you start to fall, somebody next to you helps you back up.
And that's how I think we are in society when we're not feeling so detached. We are, we are a species that helps each other more often than we hurt each other. Now, don't get me wrong with the internet. There's so many divisive things out there politically, you know, uh, so many different issues culturally. But when it comes to it on a one-on-one, when you see someone and make eye contact, someone, eye contact with someone who needs help, chances are you're going to get that help you need. So if you feel alone, just remember, you're not. You're not alone. Someone is over here ready to help pick you up. All right, folks, a wild story. A wild story that has a what we hope to be a happy ending here and uh, very interested to see more information as it comes out. Stick around for that. We'll have the podcast up right after this bachelor rush hour. All right. See you in a second.